Welcome to the Personal Trainers Who Care podcast. I'm Catherine Marion, and I am a trainer and manager at the Freeform Fitness Wellington Street location, and I will also be your host as we get to know another member of our incredible team. Here we share the stories of our personal trainers, because at the heart of every fitness business is a passionate individual who cares about changing lives and helping others realize their full health potential. This podcast is a production of Freeform Fitness, a boutique style personal training studio with six locations across Ottawa, Canada. We hire the very best personal trainers. They are ambitious, hardworking team players who know how to get their clients results. Our trainers provide expert personal training services in studio and also online. And every program is tailored to the individual needs of the client. If you would like to know more about Freeform Fitness, be sure to visit us at freeformfitness.ca. In today's episode, we talked to Sarah Carey, and I decided to go visit her at the Albert Street location. And you're going to see in just a few moments that we sat two meters apart. Both of us are vaccinated. She's given me permission to tell you that. And uh, we had our conversation this way. It was a first for us, and we certainly hope you enjoy it. Sarah's been with Freeform Fitness since October of 2018. And aside from her personal training certification, Sarah is also a pre- and postnatal CSEP specialist. She has a precision nutrition level one certification, and she's cur currently taking a course with CSEP again, focusing on concussions. But here's something few may know. Sarah originally studied to become a vet technician, thanks to her love of animals, of course. And so we're going to find out about this and so much more over the next few minutes. So take a look as I talk to Sarah. All right, Sarah. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I know it's strange, right? Talking to me or talking to the screen? It's all good. <laughs> I'm trying to look straight into the ca camera at you. I know it's good. Look at me in there. I'm over here. Yeah. I'm, glad, well, I'm glad everybody gets to see you because they get to see me way too often when, when I do these podcasts. So this one's all about you. So listen, tell us about this love of animals. How, how did that start with you? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in the countryside of Ottawa and we always had some stray cats because Unfortunately, people did not want their animals and they dumped them in our neighborhood. Therefore, I took care of them uh, from like a young age because they would all, I would always intrigue them with treats. Aww. <laughs> um, and then when I was in grade six, I convinced my dad to let me foster a pregnant cat from the Humane Society, uh, which in his part was a poor idea because I ended up with three cats. Um, and did you keep them all? Uh, and so we ended up with nine kittens. Oh dear. <laughs> and we I ended up keeping two of them. And that kind of fostering led me into looking into jobs within the technology, the vet technology industry, and I therefore graduated high school and went off to school for vet tech. That's really cool because that's those are not easy studies. I mean, taking care of, of animals, that's you know a big commitment. So how did you kind of figure out, okay, this is where I want to be. And then there's a little bit of a switch that happens and you're thinking, okay, wait a minute, maybe something else. Uh, so long story short, I don't believe that individuals should go to school directly out of high school. Uh, <laughs> being 17 years old, I graduated high school. Um, I got into a program that not a lot of people get into directly out of high school. So I was the youngest person. Uh, that and working full time as uh, like in a grocery store, I just couldn't keep up with the studies and I didn't pass uh, some of the courses, <laughs> which therefore make, made a three year program close to five years for me. Uh, and at the end, I was just like frustrated with myself and just not loving what I was doing in school, therefore showing me some things within the industry that I didn't love. Um, and I left, took a year off, figured things out, uh, then tried to join the military. Um, wow, wait a minute, nobody told me about that. That's another huge step. Uh, there, that's how it got me into the fitness industry. I tried to join the military, so I worked with a personal trainer for myself as a client for about a year and a half, waiting to do the fitness test. Um, I was trying to join as a medic, so there was a bit of delay in recruiting, since it's a high competitive field for them. Um, and the trainer, as I was waiting, said, I think you maybe have interest in learning the whys behind exercise and said, if military doesn't work out, I think you should look into education to become a personal trainer. 
Um, I don't know if it's a compliment or an insult. Uh, she did tell me that I have just enough evilness in me to like train clients to not say no to them. So I don't know if that's a com compliment, but uh, I take, take it as one. Absolutely. I'm with her. <laughs> that's yeah. a great compliment. Okay. So then, so then you never, you know, you didn't go farther into the military. Yeah. So I got to like, the testing and it was just so long and there were still so many more processes uh i'm like i was getting older i wanted to start something so i decided i made mean to just apply for college i applied for algonquin's health and fitness promotion program um I, I told myself like if not anything like i'm doing school and if i join the military i join the military if not i have a backup plan i love it well you're you know what your backup plan brought you to us so we're very <laughs> grateful because free form fitness you know, we love having you on our team, uh, both managing and as a trainer. And, you know, that's what we want to talk about now. I mean, I love the backstory, but let's talk a little bit now the process. So you, you joined Freeform Fitness over here and, you know, you took all the steps to get here. So you went to college, you did all those classes and so forth, but you you keep learning. So despite all of that, so everything you know about the vets, everything you know, or, but, you know, vet stuff, animal work and the military, now you're learning about personal training and then all your other courses as well. Why is it so important to you to keep learning? Um, I personally love science. So anything that like continues, even though some things aren't like directly related to science, like anatomy, like anatomy is. Um, so just like the background, I always want to know the why. Um, for the reason behind the postnatal certification is I was working at another gym um, and as a front desk while I was in school. And I was hearing a lot of clientele saying, I'm looking for a trainer. I'm expecting, I want someone that knows like safety wise to work with them. And that particular gym didn't have any trainers who did the reasoning behind safety and pregnancy. So although I don't have any children myself, I thought it was an important uh, certification to go and learn the whys so that when I'm training a client who's expecting, I can say like, this is important for this um, scenario in your journey. That's beautiful. So that brings you back to the first question I was gonna ask you is, I guess, can women train when they're pregnant? Of course, uh, and it benefits you as long, as long as your doctor says like, don't do it, then there are safe ways around it. And it's overall going to benefit your recovery postpartum. Uh, so once you're, ready to get back into the gym, you then have the skill foundation based from pregnancy to build from there. That's beautiful. And do you find that sometimes pregnant ladies are a little bit fearful when they come into the gym? Like they're not so sure what they can do, what they can't do? Um, so my experience this past year has been a lot of pregnant clients because of pandemic. <laughs> uh, so I don't find that. Uh, I find it when they're coming here, they're not fearful because they've had the guidance from their doctors. Um, so maybe there is, but in my like experience with my clients, there hasn't been. And so what are some of the biggest things that they have to do differently that, you know, something's, you know, let's say we have two women side by side, both are healthy, both have doctors that say, go ahead, you can do just about anything. What are, you know, for instance, one or two differences between the two, the two clientele, the pregnant lady and the non-pregnant lady? Uh, yeah. So a lot of it is a line on your stomach as well. you can't do that at a certain point it's not comfortable for you it, it it could be safe but not recommend it um and then also lying on your back um at a certain point you're not comfortable on your back so you have to find alternative core ways to engage your core without being flat on your back and do you does the do the workouts change dramatically as the as the pregnancy progresses yeah as pregnancy progresses it definitely would change a little bit but it would just be more of a, making sure you're moving, making sure you're keeping core engaged um, and, and keeping you moving is the biggest thing so that you're not sitting down throughout the end of your pregnancy feeling like you're not moving and getting sore. Yes. Okay, so how far along do you think that women, again, we're going to assume that doctor says, you, you, can, yeah. you know, doctor says everything is good. How far along do you think that they can keep training? Uh, it really depends on the circumstance. Uh, all of my clients uh, this past year trained up until the week they gave birth. Beautiful. Uh, but that was their preference. Also, they were early, so things changed as well. You could be training up until you give birth, and that's because you're a couple weeks early. You're not expecting it. 
um, uh, or there's you're late, a little bit late, and you're still training because you just want the end. <laughs> yes, exactly. Now, here's the question I'm dying to know. Do the mamas ever come back with their babies to show you their, their brand new little newborns? Uh, yeah, I have one current client who trains at uh, a time when there's no one else here, and we just set the baby up uh, in a playpen, and she plays with her toys as mom is working out. Um, it's safe and she's by herself here. So it's convenient because there's not a lot of gyms right now have daycare in their facilities because of COVID. Um, and then two of my other women are via Zoom. So baby joins the workout. So that's really important for us. I'm gonna stop you there for a sec because it's something that you know we're really proud to be able to offer is you know, pre-pandemic before this, you know, this strangeness happened. A lot of moms were coming in with their children they would sleep in either a playpen or their little car seats, or sometimes even a stroller if they could walk to the location. And as the baby slept, mama could get a workout in. And now because of the difference in time, sometimes we have very, very quiet periods. And so moms can come in with their child and be all alone in the gym with just the trainer, um, which is another great opportunity. But the other thing that we do, and you'll, you'll see that on all of our social media is that we also offer virtual training. So we can train through the screen, just like we're talking to you now. So if you're a new mom, You've done all your training with Sarah and now you're at home and you want to keep training you can kind of do it and we don't mind if the baby starts stirring and crying we're all good with that but you can still get your workouts in uh, from home which brings me to my other question Sarah so now we've had the baby we're at home how soon can we usually go back to training uh so most people say six to eight weeks uh, but I know current clients it's been two months and they're still trying to find a routine so I like I'll, although she it's their saying, I want to get back. They just have, don't have that routine. And I feel it's better that they just take time to get used to being a new mom uh, and then have a solid routine set in both training and uh, a new motherhood. So yeah. may, it may be like current clientele might be two and a half months till they're back. And like, that's perfectly okay. Awesome. Yeah, because there's no hard and fast rules, right? Yeah. You have to do what's, what you feel is best yeah. for you. And if your baby's not sleeping, like you can't really train that well if you're sleep deprived 24 hours a day. Yes, something many new moms know all about. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so prenatal, postnatal, your pro when it comes to that. Tell us about pre precision nutrition. That's a whole other certification and certainly, you know, a tough one to get. Yeah, so I chose to get that to help my clients uh, better make options within their lifestyle. So instead of giving them a full plan, um, I focus on meal blend meal of what we can change in that so that they have a well-balanced meal. I also believe in not like depriving yourself of something. If you want to have a dessert, I want them to feel comfortable that they have a well-balanced diet within the rest of their meals so that they don't feel like they can choose, they don't need to, uh, don't need to what? Don't need to make that. Don't need to cut everything out. Yeah, they don't need to cut everything out. Love it. See, I knew exactly where you were going yeah. with that because that's really key, right? The minute we say you never have anything again, it's like that's the only thing you think about, right? Yeah. What about nutrition when it comes? Because is it different trying to coach a pregnant lady with nutrition than someone who's maybe not pregnant or a man, for instance? You know, we're you know the man, the woman who's not pregnant, and the pregnant lady. Do you find a big difference, or is it or are the basics almost the same for everyone? Yeah, the basics are relatively the same uh, for pregnant women. You don't need that much extra in your diet. Um, you might feel a bit more hungry and at a certain point, like at the beginning, if you're nauseous all the time, you might just need whatever you can get into your body. And that's how it goes for a little bit of time. Yeah, sounds about right. And I'm sure that this is something that you can you know, tie in really well with your training. So as you're training your clients, would you say that the nutrition and the training combined gives them an even better effect, a better yeah. result? We chat about nutrition uh, in rest time. So instead of sitting down for half an hour and chatting about um, a full meal plan, if someone's grabbing water, we chat, how's this going? Um, or I'll send via email, like some check-ins, some ideas. If I have a lot, a lot of recipes for my clients that I've kind of like tested out. So I say it's safe. Those options, if you're a sweet tooth, I have energy bite recipes that I'll send via email. Or if you're a salty tooth, a, more of a salty person, I'll send ideas for recipes in granola bars, like pre homemade ones so that they're 
less um, random ingredients. I like that. So that's like, you know, that's like a full fledged trainer. So we're talking about training them. We're talking about nutrition, but you're also offering them your own personal recipe. That's great. Talk about putting personal and personal training. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Listen, I know there's one more certification that you're working on and you're not done yet. From what I understand, it's all about concussions. What made you want to go into that? Yeah. So I have had several concussions myself. The most recent one took me about a year and a half to like fully get all of my post concussion symptoms out and gone. Um, and I was working with a concussion specialist at a physio place and she kind of led me to some articles and like information. Um, and then CSAP during COVID times, they started offering new courses that would generally be done in person in the West coast of Canada, um, but now they're online, so they're more accessible. So I'm currently working on a concussion recovery plan certification, so it can help me for clients that have clearance to work out, um, develop a plan to get back to where they were post-concussion. That's really interesting. And I know you're not quite done with this course. You're, you're still in the middle of it, but have you learned something really fascinating so far, that little tidbit that you'd love to share with us? I'm sure there's a lot, but if you have to pick one. Uh, I think the big yeah. question is, I, well, I'm going to put you on the spot, you know, you're talking about concussions and then going back into the gym and hopefully working out. I think a lot of people think, wait a minute, are we supposed to be working out when we have a concussion? Yeah, so you have definitely have to be cl cleared by a medical professional to work out again after uh, having a concussion. From own experience of being stubborn, it's not a good idea if you haven't spoken to your, your doctor because it could extend um, your recovery, especially if you, uh, I've had five myself. So I, uh, like, it takes a while to recover. So you don't want to go back to the gym. Um, uh, the one thing that kind of interested me is the way that you adapt to training is it's really hard now to have like your heart rate go down really fast and then spike back up. So high intensity, um, is one thing that interested me the most in this course is that it's adapting to being able to keep your heart rate at a steady state instead of spiking and going back down fast. Very interesting. Well, good luck with the completion of this course. And, you know, this is just one more way that you'll be able to help, you know, all of your clients. I'm, you know, <laughs> I have to say, I heard you say you've had five concussions. What were you doing? Uh, me and my brother didn't get along. <laughs> Uh, we were general siblings, just he was stronger than I was, and uh, we fought, and your head goes in, in, <laughs> I got my fair share with him, so. Did he ever get any concussions? No, his, I think maybe his head's like a little bit more solid than mine. You know what, that's funny, you see that, I'm wondering, okay, in your course, have you learned that? Some people are just prone to them, whereas others are not? Um, so if you hit your head, like, earlier on as a child, like, you are likely more prone to them interesting um and like my first one was at like two years old so uh, I feel like at a certain point yeah I say my brother and I were fighting but I don't think it was that rough I think it was just that I had a concussion so young uh not by him and uh, just clear that up yeah <laughs> I just fell off a play structure and hit my head from that like playing as a two-year-old um and then I think from there it was just a lot easier to get one as I got older. Well, if there was wood around here, I'd knock on it and say, let's hope no more concussions for you, Sarah. Yeah, I'll now. stay close to the ground. Yes, well, that's forward. good. And I'll stay far away because yeah. I'm a bit of a clutch. So it's all good. All right. So, you know, um, I love that you keep learning this way. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot again. Have you thought of the next thing you'd like to learn about? Like once you get clear, you know, once you're done with this whole concussion course, what's the next thing you think that you might be interested in? Have you thought that far yet? Um, I have, yes, um, I would really be interested in doing FSG, uh, yes. uh, but I also know that that is a while away because of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, you have to be physically in person with that person to do the course. Yes, that's true. And, uh, another really great thing to have because it allows people to move so much better 
you know, once you get that course, how about we talk again? How yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll fix your tight hips. So yes, <laughs> everybody knows about my tight hips. Okay. <laughs> so listen, you you know, you have all of this, all of this knowledge. Do you find that day to day you're able to use it with all of your clients? Yeah, uh, specifically the pre and postnatal, like I said, three current clients. I uh, just had babies, and then I have two more two more clients that were with me from their pregnancy uh, over a year ago. So I learned from that. Um, and then I do have one client who has had concussions. So I've taken a, like bits of knowledge to like go into their program, uh, but not full force because I haven't completed the certification yeah. yet. Yeah, that's really great. And, you know, often we're talking about pregnant ladies right now, but your clientele, you know, goes from, you know, the young adult all the way into, you know, the elderly, right? You're able to help all of all age groups, are you? Yeah. Um, specifically here, a, it's a lot nicer for a, it's obviously really quiet right now. During the day, it is super quiet because we're downtown. Um, it's nice to not have any other clients around if you're a little bit cautious because of COVID. So I do have some clientele that are in their 60s that's like, here because there's no one at this time. Yeah. Or there's time slots where if there was another trainer, um, there's ways around not seeing anybody else. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a bonus for us right now, just on, the, you know, what's happening in the world. It allows us to provide times where a client might be alone. Yeah. And this is, is this, this Albert Street location is, is one of them. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about your own training. What about you? What do you like to do? What are your favorite exercises? Um, so I specifically really love working with kettlebells right now. Uh, Sean at the Medcalf location recently did a kettlebell course, as you know, for FFF staff. Um, so I've been playing around with those in my workouts. Um, but I've just been so busy right now. I've been really structured in my workouts the same way that I would structure my clients' plans in month-long, six-week chunks. Um, to get better results there and to stay consistent. There's nothing in my mind that, that like I can work my schedule around. If I know I have four days that I need to do for my program, I can figure out times. Uh, I can do it right now. It's four o'clock in the morning, which is brutal, but it's, it's the only time that I know I'm going to do it. Uh, and because it's on paper and it's a plan, I'm going to do it. You are actually training at four o'clock in the morning? Uh, four fifteen. At like three or four days a week. Uh, three days a week at that time, and then I use my weekends for one other day. So like that, the that's weekends. That's determined. That's commitment. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy, but it's going to happen. But you know what I like about what you just said is that you're applying to your own life what we teach our clients. You find a way to fit it in. So right now, because there's so much happening you know, in your schedule of, you know, with free form and with, with, you know, with our clients and the business, that's the only time that that works for you. And you probably, you know, you know, it's going to be short term. And so you're applying to yourself what you would say to your client. Yeah. Most clients won't ever step foot in a gym at four o'clock in the morning, but they, at least they work office jobs for the most part, they start work around nine. So my schedule starts at 6 a.m., Therefore, two hours before is 4 a.m. For them, they it's less early. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, <laughs> let me be the first to say congratulations. I get up at 4.30, but I don't move weights around at 4.30. So you win. <laughs> Great. Um, what about your downtime? We want to know a little bit about you. What, what do you do in your downtime? So we know you train really early. You probably go to bed really early. Do you have some time in there where you just take care of Sarah? Yeah, so I'm usually done I here around like 2.33 by the time. I am fully cleaned up and ready to go. Uh, I am looking forward to getting back to yoga as that's something I've missed pre-COVID times. I haven't gotten into the routine yet, but I'm going to go back this week. Um, so that's two times a week for me. Uh, and I've also, during the summer, really enjoyed paddle boarding. I've gone to a couple of like Gatineau lakes to play around with some skills there. And then at the cottage, we have some pedal boards, which are a fun activity to do when you're not in the gym setting, just staying active that way. 
And then in wintertime, I st solely look to stay warm. <laughs> I do not you, go I, outside. I read that in your notes. You're not an outdoorsy person in the wintertime. No. So you wouldn't come with me snowshoeing, cross-country skiing, hiking in the snow? Would you consider it? I would consider it, and then I would look at the temperature. And then, then decide. And then decide. <laughs> so it's, if it's a winter minus 10, that works, but not a minus 40? Yeah. All right, yeah. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Um, so we talked way at the top that you really love animals. You must have pets at home. Yeah, I bought two uh, cats. Um, both of them are super annoying right now because <laughs> of COVID. They got really used to me being at home oh, no. during some lockdowns. So every single day when I wake up, when I come home, they are right at my feet. Um, and I start need to start like training them back into being independent cats because that's the one nice thing about cats is that they are a lot less needy, except for right now. Right now, I was gonna, now that you say that, uh, uh, other cat owners must be in the same predicament where they went from being independent to have you know their owners at home 24 7. yeah uh there are a lot of like articles out there for pet anxiety and i feel like that is my cat well, at least my male cat right now my female cat doesn't really care she she's content on her pillow she's pretty mellow <laughs> uh, she'll just lie on her back upside down half the day and just like her her way to happiness as long as i give her food she's happy that's so adorable. Okay, tell me what their names are. Uh, Bandit and Daisy. Beautiful. Love that. So listen, if someone is, you know, listening to us right now and they're inspired to, to, to come to Albert and to train with you, is there something else you'd love for people to know about you? Whether it's personal yeah. <laughs> or work-wise, you know, trainer-wise, or anything you'd like to share? Uh, trainer wise, I definitely have been told before that I look like I would be like, slack, let them slack on their workouts. But the fact, especially now that we have to wear masks, um, they can't read me uh, very well. And they know that they can't get away with doing a little bit less. Um, I also am a terrible counter. So they try <laughs> to play it against me, but they, uh, they end up doing more reps than anything else. I've tried my hardest, but uh, yeah, I lacking on the counting skills sometimes. <laughs> I count with my fingers a lot of the time. I love it. I love it. Yes, I get that as well. Are you sure it's 12? I think that was, you know, 13. <laughs> I yeah, it. I think also for the Zoom sessions, they do a little bit more because there's like a little bit of uh, delay in the sound. Oh, yes. <laughs> so they might not hear me or the like awkward freezing if like the internet isn't great. Uh, isn't great. <laughs> Well, that's another thing that we want to say that Sarah is available in person here at the Albert Street location, and she's also available, you know, over the screen. We did our, 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 our online sessions are done through Zoom, and so that way we can, you know, still guide you and check out your form and make sure that you're doing things right and do our best to, to count yeah. you know, in, the, in the right numbers. <laughs> and if you're like me and you don't like cold and you don't want to leave your house in the wintertime, then Zoom's perfect. You don't have to leave. You can leave your, your bed in the morning and then go to your screen. It's a great option. <laughs> All right. Let's finish off with some three rapid fire questions. I'm going to throw these at you, see what happens. Okay. So number one, what is something that you know now that you wish you knew when you first started personal training? Um, I yeah, so um, from school and from the previous place I worked at, um, it was hour long sessions. And I wish I had known that you can be so efficient in your half hour times. Looking back at programs from when I first started to programs I create now, there's so much extra in there because I've learned how to maximize the time in the half hour. So I, yeah, I guess I, I wish I knew that it was possible to train in an hour. In a, half in, hour. A, in a half hour. Gotcha. In a half hour. But that was a thing back then too, the whole hour long training. Yeah. That's yeah. A whole other, that's a whole other show right there. We'll teach you how to be independent for your mobility and then efficient with your workout with us in half an hour. That's awesome. All right. What's the first skill that you usually like to teach a beginner? Uh, foundation movements for sure. So like uh, a squat, a hinge for sure. Um, and then also shoulder mobility because a lot of times we get desk workers. So 
making sure that you can move properly before you do anything else. Very good. And the last one, what do you believe is your most valuable coaching skill? Other than not um, being able to count. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that like the fact that I can relate from being a very beginner working with a trainer uh, myself as a client to becoming a trainer um, is my most valuable because I can relate with needing some time to change schedules or um, learning different tech like phases there like not knowing and then being able to relate of yeah at first I hated lunges and I a lot of clients hate lunges so I can relate in how much I hated them but now I love them and maybe they'll love them too. Yeah. I don't know about that for a lot of, a lot of my clients, but one day, maybe one they'll day. be. This, we'll keep trying, right? Yeah. I'll keep making them do the lunges. There you go. I <laughs> love it. All right. Listen, that's it for today. I wanted to, you know, thank you very much, Sarah, for, for joining me uh, in this latest edition of our Personal Trainers Who Care podcast. If people want to know more about you, are there um, social media outlets where they can find you? Are you out there somewhere? Uh, well, you can find me on Instagram, but there's not too much exciting going on there other than my cat. Uh, um, maybe your cat lovers out there. We'd love to see your cat. Yeah, so it's just my first name, last name, one. There you, you go. Find me there. There. One. Uh, but it hasn't been that exciting the past year because I don't do anything or I'm on the water and I'm not bringing my phone. Well, that's there. good because it means you're resting. Yeah. It's good <laughs> when you don't bring your phone. All right. Well, thank you at home for watching us. Be sure to check out all of our podcasts. Uh, you'll get to know more members of our incredible team. And while you're there, you can like and subscribe for even more great health and fitness content. And that concludes today's edition of our Personal Trainers Who Care podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.